Hello, this is Laura, um, carnivore for over three years. My channel's name is Eat To Your Health with Carnivore. I do have a Facebook page, which is Eat To Your Health with Keto slash Carnivore. I just couldn't use that name on here. Too many, too many characters. So I want to go over um, something that I do on weekends. Friday is considered a weekend where I work. Um, we're off Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I am on call, so I could be called out. If that happens, I'll have to edit change it. Um, anyway, one of the things that I do, um, because I'm also a prepper, um, is I like to make sure I have food supplies for, in case something ever happens. We did have a derecho that went through our town um, June 29th with sustained 135 mile per hour winds that knocked out everybody's power and all the things that go with that. Um, didn't really affect me a lot. I had a lot of my meat already jarred. What I didn't have jarred up, we cooked. So I just think it's a good idea to have things set up in case you need them. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over some of the stuff that I do. So I have, let me take you down out of here for just a second. Ooh, okay. So I have jars sitting in some very hot water with the lids there. Um, and so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting up a roast into chunks. And then um, what I do with those is I cold pack them. It's called, called cold packing because you put raw meat into the, the jars with uh, salt. You can put beef, um, whatever that's called. I don't know. What is that called? Boyon. I don't do that because I don't want all the chemical crap that's in it. So I use Redmond's Real Salt. That's what I put in mine. And you can put like ribeye fat or something like that in there if you need to. I'm not going to need to do that because the meat I bought today was very fatty. If I do, I have some in my fridge or my freezer. So what I bought was arm roast and, yep, boneless arm roast. I bought three of those. I just had them wrap them up like this. I told her to throw them all in the same package and she said, really? I said, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, mute, I'm prepping. She said, okay. So that's basically what it looks like. Okay, so it has quite a bit of fat. Um, what I do tend to do is I cut off some of that fat and kind of set it aside and put it in on top of the um, meat in the jar. So I don't know if any of you have ever canned um, before or if cold packed or know what that even means. Um, pretty awesome. So hang on, I'm gonna throw this away and I'll be right back. All right. So hopefully you guys can see me and hear this. All right, I'll kind of set it that way. So I'm trying to not cut myself, which usually happens. It's a good chunk. Just trying to. So I don't know if you've ever had this meat in a jar before, um, where it's been canned or cold packed, but it is amazing. Um, for people, if they're not carnivore, it works really well with. Um, like if you're making a roast beef sandwich or just beef and noodles. Uh, for me, I literally can just open up the jar. Uh, I usually add more salt. Sometimes I'll add a little butter and you can eat it right out of it. It's completely cooked, ready to go. Um, you can take it with you on the fly. If you had to leave your area, you could. Just seeing about a little more. I may not cut all three of these up. I'm gonna kinda do a few at a time first, um, and then we'll go from there, so. So basically I do strips and then I cut it up into cubes just so it fits into the um, jars a little bit easier. This stuff is just wonderful to have. Nice to have on hand. Um, I'm not a doomsday person per se, but I do think that you should always be prepared to take care of yourself. My grandmother um, 
at a very young age told me it is not the government's job to take care of you um, and any government that wants to take care of all of your needs has an ulterior motive. So, and if we haven't seen that in the last three years, I don't know what we have seen. Another thing I wanted to show you too, um, while we're doing this with my clean hand, um, when you are carnivore and you use a lot of like ribeyes, different things like that, you have, you know, the ribeye fat or the fat off of your burger or whatever. Um, I even buy ribeye fat from my butcher and I'll cook it down and make my own tallow. So that, it's in a blue jar, so that's just what it looks like. But that is tallow. That is shelf stable for a long, long time, long time. So that's one of the benefits of eating this way is you have that tallow. Um, you know, during the depression, a lot of people survived by eating tallow. Um, it's kind of a forgotten thing that people haven't done. Uh, the other thing I'll show you that I make is I make tallow lotions. So I have lotion, I have like the, a whipped body butter that I put on. Um, really good for people with psoriasis, eczema, whatever you want to call it, same thing basically. I've had quite a few patients um, with psoriasis that are spending, you know, $5,000 a month on the medications to treat their disease. Nothing about curing it. Most of the time I have found it's a food allergy and the culprit on most of the people I've taken care of is dairy. It's actually dairy. Um, so a lot of times we go over dietary changes that they can make and add in good salts, taking back their, their own bodies because nobody has the right to tell them what to do. Um, I am a nurse of 21 years. I'm not saying that doctors are evil. I'm saying the medical system has been corrupted. Um, and I think anybody out there would say, yeah, that's definitely been happening. So um, you ultimately, it's your body. You have the right to make the decisions as to what happens. I think I'm gonna cut up this one. So I'm gonna start with strips on it. The thing I did notice, if you aren't doing this lifestyle and you start to, I do make some of my own uh, dish soap toothpaste, things like that. But um, I find I really kind of have to use Dawn dish soap um, to get through the grease. Our house is extremely old and uh, the pipes do not like the amount of fat I send down them. So, all right. One more cut and then I think we'll be ready to jar. If there's any questions, you can leave um, them in the comments and I will get back to you. I get back to every comment. Please like, follow, share. If you know anybody who has um, pretty much any of the metabolic diseases, um, it would probably behoove them to start following some carnivores, some keto, ketovore. It's, any of it's better than the standard American diet that we're sold. Um, I was carnivore. I started carnivore the day before Thanksgiving. No, I started keto, sorry. The day before Thanksgiving in 1991. Um, and then I went carnivore a little over three years ago. And eh, I can't even tell you how long it's been now that I, I went lion, which just means ruminant meats salt and water um, but it's amazing you feel amazing our bodies do very well on the protein and the fat if you think of fat for energy it's kind of like a piece of coal it may take a little bit of time to get it kind of lit but once it is it burns steady it's a good um, fat crosses the blood brain barrier without having to have insulin gets into the cells without having to use as much insulin um, if any some studies say that it does take some some studies say it doesn't so 
I don't know. All right. So then what I do is I just take out the warm jars. They don't have to be crazy hot or anything. Um, I've got my pressure canner outside. I've got the water in it. I have very hard water here, which is why I have a Brita filter um, with a fluoride filter, all the good stuff that I use. But I always put some white vinegar, just maybe a fourth of a cup in my canner. That way I don't end up with that calcium and minerals on the side of my jars. Not that it still wouldn't be good. It would be fine, but... I'm a little bit OCD, so I like things to kind of look look like they should. You can press these down. Now you can always use the um, handle of like a wooden spoon or a spatula, plastic or wood. You never want to go down the inside of your jars with um, like a knife, a metal, anything like that. Because if you scratch it, it can cause issues and they can actually break while they're processing, which is never good. I may do more than one water or processing today. Um, I may do two jars or two packages of six jars at a time. We'll just see. So I live in West Central Illinois. Yes, I live in Illinois. Anyway, not by choice. Uh, where is everybody else from? I've had people, uh, when I was doing keto cooking with a friend of mine, um, we kind of did uh, lives together and did stuff like that. Um, as far away as Maine, I've had Canada, uh, South Africa. I've had all kinds of people on there. Australia. I have yet to try kangaroo. I'm not against it. Just saying. I'm all about surviving, so whatever it takes, other than I'm not going to eat a human, <clears throat> ever. Anyway, if you want to put in there where you're from, I would like to see that. That would be great. If you have any questions um, about anything to do with carnivore, you can leave those in the comments. So... Now, before you put the, the lids on top and stuff, you do want to wipe off the, the rim. You do not want there to be any, anything up there. So, I think I'll take one of those out. That's one too many. All right. I'm gonna take you guys with me because I gotta get another jar. So. Let's see, this is my crazy room. So I'm gonna show you something real quick. So that is just some of the stuff that I supply. A lot of this stuff is stuff I would never eat as long as I have food. If something happens and it goes haywire, I'll do it. But until then, I'm not. All right, so I got us a jar. I just wanna put it in the hot water for a minute or so. And the lid. Have any of you guys on here ever done any of this kind of canning or coal packing? I'm kind of interested to see if there's too many people that have done it. My grandmother used to, which is where I learned it. Um, sorry, I'm trying to plug this back in. There we go. Um, it's where I learned it, but it does seem to be when you talk to people, they're very surprised they've never heard of it. So, I don't know. And I think, I don't know, I'm not going to make any judgments. I was going to say, I wonder if, you know, if you've been in a town for years and years, like a big city, maybe it's something you didn't run into, you weren't around grandparents as much. I don't know. Maybe you were. But it seems like when I'm working, um, I run into people that are like, oh, I never went to my grandma's house. So I've never been on a farm. Then they kind of tend to not 
know it, but anybody can learn it. I mean, it's very simple. All right, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab one more jar, hang on. Must be early out for school for kids out here. The school bus out there, so. I'm gonna cut a little bit more off of that third one, but I'm not gonna do all of it. And then I'm actually gonna cut thin strips of what I have left, which I'll show you. And I'm going to make um, kind of like a beef jerky or what are those one things called? Carnivore snacks, sticks, snacks, something like that. Um, I do that. I also uh, make pemmican, if you've ever heard of pemmican. Um, it's kind of a survival food that the Indians um, made. Uh, they put lots of seeds, berries, stuff like that in there. I don't do that portion of it because, of course, I don't eat that. Um, but you could if you're keto or keto bore. I think there are some things. So I do want to make a couple of page mentions that if you're starting out to this, I have been doing it for a lot, long time. I'm not a doctor, I am a nurse. Um, but there are some people I wanna mention, some pages I think you should go also maybe follow them. Um, first one is gonna be Dr. Ken Berry and Nisha. Next is gonna be Kelly Hogan, she's been doing it for a long time. Dr. Baker, Carrie at Homestead How, Bill Knott, Dr. Chappie, Ferrigno Freedom, Carnivore Backwoods, Hanging with the Browns, Sightless Carnivores, JT, and I can't remember his handle. I watched him today. Mm, I'll have to look. International Carnivore, Alia Wells, and Carnivore Today are just some of the ones. There's Dr. Hampton. I don't know what his is. He's out of Chicago. Uh, but these are all carnivores. So these are people that you could get a, learn a lot of stuff from. Um, this, I'm just kind of showing you how you can be prepped and ready for who knows what. Just in case. And hopefully we never have to worry about it. But my grandmother always said, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And this is something that um, I've opened up jars that were eight years old and they were great. So I'm not concerned about, you know, spoilage or anything like that. As long as your stuff seals when you can it. You're fine. Um, do a couple more pieces for this jar. And then I'll clean the rings. And then I will come back on and add in um, what everything kind of looked like when I got done. I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. Okay. Good enough. Alright. So this is the size of what I have left that I'm going to do thin strips and I'm actually going to um, make like the, it's almost like a beef jerky. So I'm not going to use that. <coughs> Cut up just a little bit of this fat. You can use um, Use this, like I said, for the beef and noodles, things like that. Just eat it plain. Anything you would put beef in, you can do. Now, I've also done hamburger this way. I have done chicken. Um, I do the fattier, like the thighs um, with the skin. I'm trying to think what else. You can do fish. Fishing has not been great this year on the Mississippi River. We're close to the river. Um, Hasn't been great. I haven't got to go as much because I've been doing a lot of call. Um, it's kind of been a crazy year. Um, we haven't had the COVID come back yet to any degree, but we do have a lot of very young patients who are very sick, very sick. So I won't give you what my opinion is on why. <clears throat> Most people who know me know exactly why. 
So anyway, so I have been very busy. So like I said, you just want to clean off your rims. Kind of let it sit there for a minute. I'll set it there so you can see. Then what I do is for pints, whether they're the shorter and the pint or these like the jelly jars that are pints, you'll put them in, you'll put together your um, pressure cooker. You will, um, you know, put the lid on, you put the little bubbler on top, the weighted bubbler on top. Um, you want to use the one that's appropriate for doing meat, which is the heaviest one. If you have one that comes with three, two or three of those bobble things, that's what it is. Um, then you, for a pint, you will cook them for an hour and 15 minutes for quarts. It's an hour and a half. So I don't do this with a measuring spoon because that's not how my grandmother did anything. That's how I, I don't do anything like that either. I've never had these come out where they're like too salty, something like that. They always come out just fine. Like I said, I will get off of here in a few and then any, I'll take pictures of everything when it's done. These normally seal before I can even walk in the door with them. You'll hear them pop and you know you've got a good seal. I do that with uh, any of the vegetables that I can for my husband. He's... Uh, He's able to eat vegetables and they don't seem to bother him. Um, they don't like me and I feel the same way about them. So like I said, you just snug down the lids. You don't want them super tight, but you don't want them loose enough that, they're, um, that they let out the, the fat and the fluid that these will build. You don't have to add any water to them. They are ready to be cooked as soon as you added the salt. Like I said, if you're somebody that's not strict carnivore and you don't mind extra spices and things that may have maltodextrin, I don't know. I ain't judging anybody for how they do their carnivore. It's their body. They can do it however they want. But you could do um, the beef bouillon if you wanted to. Same with chicken. If you do chicken, you could add it in there. I don't do that because I don't. My body does not respond well. So... That's how this girl does it. Some of my pans, as you can see, they, I'll show you. It's, you can tell it's been around a while. So then I'll just carry this out and I'll put everything in there. So if, um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. As soon as I can get um, subscribers, I think you have to have 50 to be able to go live. That would be great. Um, I don't care about making money. Zero. Don't care if I get to a thousand. Don't care. Um, I'm not doing this for money. I just want to get the information out there and I'm not dogging anybody if they do it to make money. I just am not doing it for that reason. But if I can get to 50, I can do lives right on there instead of having to make a video and then upload it to YouTube. So we'll see. I'll try. But like I said, Go look those other people up. Um, I think the more information you have, the better off you are. I don't use Google to look up anything. I use a search engine that's called DuckDuckGo. I've had people say, oh, Google bought it. I don't know, but I can tell you when I look something up that's only my business, nothing shows up later, like on Facebook or one of the other platforms that are owned by the Zuck. Um, I, don't, I don't get bombarded with stuff, so... I don't know. I use DuckDuckGo, but I would go out and do some research. Uh, the old days, 91, I had to go to the library and do it the old-fashioned way and look at all the old medical books um, from the 1850s up to about 1910. Um, and they all started with nutrition, which should tell you something. None of the books now, uh, medical, whether it be nursing or any of them, none of them start off with uh, nutrition. So our Medical system was hijacked a long time ago and I don't see it changing anytime soon, but maybe a few of us in the medical field can change one person at a time if we can. So like I said, if you have any questions, just leave comments, questions, and I'll get back to you. Thank you. Bye.